Miller. Ah, Kerry. You certainly do have the tendency to show up unexpectedly. Old habits die hard. Hmm. Well, I'll take it from here. Not so fast. I think you owe me some answers. You do well to refrain from threatening me. This is what it's all been about, isn't it? Stratus, Mike 26, the airport, everything. You sabotaged the invasion. We needed more time. For what? To find this? What is it? That's classified. Fuck you, it is! Kerry, I swear, once more and I'll drop you where you stand. Think about it. When was the last time this region experienced tremors like these? There's been at least a dozen in the last few days alone. What? No, Miller, that's not good enough. Question time's I... over. All units, we've got multiple unknown contacts approaching the northern coast. Stand by. We might have a problem here. I'll tell you what. I like you, Kerry. I'll be back in an hour. If you're still here, I'll give you a way out. Things are about to get ugly. I suggest you keep your head down. All units, multiple hostile aircraft inbound. Hey guys, Cat Vice 9 here. And as you can tell from the title of the video, I'm going to be explaining the East Wind device from Armor 3, the game. Now, if you're new to the Armor 3 or Armor universe, you would have no clue what the East Wind device is. And if you're one of those people, this is going to contain some pretty big spoilers. And also for seasoned pro gamers for armor, <laughs> might not know fully about it, or they may not. I'm just going to explain it in the one video so you guys don't have to remember it yourselves. You could just come back onto my video and see and remember stuff. So first off, the Eastwind device... Remember spoilers, this is a major spoiler for the Eastwind device. Simplified, it's an earthquake device. This device can create earthquakes, tsunamis, avalanches, and basically all the major national disasters that you never want to happen on your front doorstep. As in Tanoa, there was a tsunami, and on Altus... Maybe not Stratus, I've never seen an earthquake on Stratus, but Altus, we've seen a couple of earthquakes on Altus. As far as we could tell, it's got a mechanism that starts off small, just a few tremors, and then as it goes along, it gets bigger and bigger and has the power to create avalanches and tsunamis once it gets to the, the larger numbers. Now, this... This device was constructed by CSAT on an unknown date, but it's definitely been in development for a real long time. Before, it was constructed before the, what's it called, campaign, the boot camp campaign. It was made before that, because we've seen earthquakes happen on Altus at that time. Now... Assuming that's been in development for a few years and they're just testing it out on Altus and maybe Stratus, we don't know about Stratus. The country who made the Eastwind device within CSAT is unknown, but I bet it's China. But it's got the Iranians from Iran testing it out. Tough one, but I bet China was the one who designed and made this thing, but... Iran and other countries in the Middle East are just testing it out in these small islands where no one would really notice. Another important aspect about the Eastwind device that it can also create earthquakes and tremors and all that in locations around the globe that don't really get earthquakes or tsunamis such as Altus on the boot camp campaign. The Medcom states that it's unusual activity and they're not too sure where it's coming from. Seeming that probably because it doesn't have tectonic plates that would collide ever. So that I'm not too sure about the Horizon Islands actually, but Altus is definitely not on any tectonic plate like radar earthquake thing so it can create earthquakes out of thin air basically but on the horizon islands seeming that they're pretty much 
a little bit above New Zealand. <laughs> I'd say a little bit, probably a bit more for Asia, but basically in line with New Zealand. And New Zealand, Australian and New Zealanders know, New Zealand gets a whole lot of earthquakes by Wellington gets a bunch of earthquakes. Christchurch, I think it was, gets a lot of them. So earthquakes isn't foreign in that part of the world, but Altus and Stratus, I guess there's no earthquakes happening up there. Unusual activity caught the eye of CTRG. And we don't know how CTRG figured out the Eastwind device's existence. They somehow did, you know, if God knows how, maybe he killed a few CSAT officers and took some intel on this project because intel on this is extremely limited. Even the conventional and special forces of this CSAT don't even know about the Eastman device as far as we can tell, unless it's Viper. Now, Viper Regiment from CSAT's special forces branches I'm pretty sure would have a clue that there is an east wind device or at least an earthquake device seeming that the east wind device is actually the very first stage of the CSAT's apex protocol which if you don't know what the apex protocol means is basically meant to destabilize the region so CSAT peacekeepers or diplomats can get stationed on where the de uh, destabilization is at to help, you know, rebuild the nation or just help out as disaster relief. And then they slowly get more and more power and then eventually, if uninterrupted, eventually take over the island politically and could be by force as well. So we've now seen this fully happen, like fully uninterrupted happening, so we don't really know how they'll finish it off. They'll just boom, take over all the military. Captain Miller from the CTRG um, 14, which is full of British special forces, as I said, maybe from the SAS or Special Boat Service. We don't really know. Or they could be a bit like the CIA and ASIO, but <laughs> they're a bit like... They're just the Special Forces and NATO, I guess. Even though NATO doesn't really even acknowledge its existence. So it's basically Viper. Except they're good. They're on the good side. Viper's just terrible. Viper killing civilians, you know, they've got no rules to what they can do, where CTRG's got moral. Basically, Captain Miller was tasked with, if they're originally part of the UK or the Commonwealth or something, they'll send these out. But this is only known for the British CTRG. There's multiple nationalities of the CTRG, and I doubt America or Australia, if there is an Australian CTRG, would do the same. It's just the Brits, we're pretty sure. But Captain Miller, nothing stood in, uh, yeah, Captain Miller, nothing stood in his way to gain that goal, except a whole bloody army of CSAT and AAF. So he allied himself with the Loyalists, which are the FIA, and tried to get it for himself. Really nothing. Now, after a few years of being on this operation, he sort of loses his morals and really causes the Stratus incident with the AEF and NATO and kicks off an invasion, basically, and a war between NATO and Altus and Stratus. He caused that, by the way, if it was intentional or accidentally causing it. We don't really know, but I'm pretty sure... It was on purpose, so when NATO leaves, if they get caught by the AF or CSAT, that could spark a whole war in itself, and Britain can't fund a whole war against even Altus and Stratus. Even though that they're really small nations, they've got a special CSAT station there. Well, CTRG won't have any hope 
from taking the, the the east wind device if they get compromised and the whole war sparks out. But with the invasion of NATO, Captain Miller knew that this would be a great time to actually move in on the device because less and less soldiers would be guarding it. Now we know that there's only one base that held the that held the east wind device. It might have been moved between bases, but we know the main base of where the CTRG, uh, the CSAT east wind device was stationed at, uh, which was probably where they did all their earthquakes and experiments and held all their scientists and Captain Miller. He was just so determined for it. Once again, we don't know how long he's been on the case, but he's been on the island for around six years, maybe, trying to do some black ops, covert ops stuff. But eventually, they're about to ship off the East Wind device. So Captain Miller threw up a plan on the go and said, half of my group take it, the other half wait for it. And the half that was meant to take, the Eastwind device, basically got slaughtered. Even though there are a few survivors, multiple CTRG members did die. Like, I think Ice 1, Ice 2 might have died as well. Arrowhawk, maybe. We didn't really know Arrowhawk. Till the new Tac Ops DLC, so he might not have been part of that already. But in the lore, he may have been. The cannon part, the cannon pathway that Corporal Carey, which I think at the time Sergeant Carey, went with the choice of the NATO choice not to help CTRG because he was ordered not to by his superiors. So he didn't listen to Captain Miller and basically the east wind device was shipped off and then traveled a few months later or a few days i should say later to the horizon islands where it was needed to construct some apex pro cool we're not too sure if there's more than one east wind device surprise me if there are multiple seeming that if you did go of the non-canon ending with the captain miller and all that you would see that there's one east wind device on a truck and there would be multiple east wind devices laying that laying the ground around the entrance of that dome it's hard to say how many of the are there are but if there's lots of them i doubt that they're in beta testing anymore for it <laughs> i reckon it would be in float a uh, full blow by being used everywhere across the world but knowing that there could be multiple Eastwind devices makes it even more dangerous. Now, at the end of the Apex Protocol campaign, Captain Miller actually finally gets his Eastwind device. Now, at the end of the campaign, CSAT was found for supporting for supporting Syndicate, which is a faction within the Horizon Islands, and they were guilty of supporting them. It's a pointless terrorist ragtag group of bandit faction, but at the end of it, they're found guilty. So then they're pretty much on the ropes. They're sort of crumbling apart. Like I said in my CSAT Explained video, it would never work out in real life because the countries are just too different. Like China seriously aligning with aligning with Iran and northern African countries it's like that wouldn't work by Africans and Iranians maybe but the Chinese and Africans that would not go down at all <laughs> Russia and China maybe they're lately they're sort of on the the tip of a sword but in this universe it's a Set on 2035, so maybe things will change at that time. But he finally gets it, but keeps it a secret that CTRG's got the Eastwind device. Now, they're probably going to use it to their own advantages. Maybe even turn it back on CSAT without even sparking off a war. Now, these earthquakes are meant for 
really big destruction and just catastrophes and disasters and all that. At this point in time, we have got no clue what CTRG is doing with the East Wind device, nor if CSAT will react to it in a bad way, assuming that it is crumbling. I wonder if they would send Viper team out to get it back. Now we don't know where it is either. Apparently it's in safe hands, as Captain Miller said at the end of the East Wind campaign. He just mentions it's in safe hands. It's like, yeah. Yeah, right. We know the CTRG well enough <laughs> that they're just nuts. Especially Captain Miller. I won't trust Captain Miller, but he got it done. He, he stole it, basically. Good for him. <laughs> But what a cost. Blaze started a war, multiple dead. I was sort of blabbering on a bit now. But yeah, that's basically the East Wind device. I hope you guys enjoyed. I might do other devices or vehicles in the future explaining them. It's just that the East Wind device is just such an important aspect in the East Wind campaign and also the Apex Protocol campaign. Stupid not to add it to my collection of factions and armor 3 stuff so I so, decided you know at this hopefully you learn a bit about the Eastwind device or just recapping your memory on the Eastwind device so that's me done Cat Physis 9 out I've exposed a global network of illegal CSAT operations Evidence of a deliberate, sustained, high-level effort to incite death and chaos has brought into question the continued viability of the Canton Protocol Strategic Alliance itself. Leaders from across the world... Who's the journalist? Mark Cole. He asks a lot of questions. Yes, he does. NATO sources have moved quickly to condemn the, quote, illegal, immoral, and indefensible act of war, with a UN Security Council resolution set to mandate peacekeeping operations in the South China Sea NATO forces remain on a heightened state of alert. This should be golden. Turn it up. The evidence has little basis in reality. <laughs> Even so, the actions of a few individuals must not reflect upon the progress made by the whole. I weep for my countrymen. There can be no question. CSAT have ingenious chaos and destruction on a massive scale by supplying dangerous criminals with military weapons they are sought to murder the people of the horizon islands <coughs> everyone here uh, yes all present look before we move on to the brief i can't help but notice just one thing here gents what's that there's been no mention of this east wind device zero oh that Yes. No, we saw no reason to complicate matters further. It's in safe hands now.